In just a few moments, we will begin our liturgy out at the Easter fire. So you're welcome to go ahead, if you would like to, join with us outside near the fountain. Um, and we'll begin in just three or four minutes out at the Easter fire. Thank you.
and welcome to our service of the great Easter Vigil. Tonight we are blessed to have nine people whose lives will be made ever more complete by receiving the full sacraments of the Catholic Church. They are called to receive the sacraments of baptism and confirmation and to partake of the first time in the blessed gift of the Holy Eucharist. In the name On this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, daughters throughout the whole world to come together for its paschal solemnity, celebrating hope, his triumph of death, living with him. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, all time belongs to power. Amen. Glorious. and protect us.
light of Christ rising in glory, dispel darkness of our hearts and minds. We stand now, please. Christ our light. Thanks be to God.
Christ our light. Thanks be to Christ our light. Praise be to Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim to our God invisible the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart 
heart for unworldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. Oh, truly necessary sin of Adam destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with 
the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets Christ your son who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in past times saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Now I invite us, please, to very carefully put out our candles and to hold them upright for just a moment after they're out so that the wax can settle, and please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night and he made the stars. 
God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Mount 
let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy said the messenger, do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its thorn horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. glad and my soul breathes. 
Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who the through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through the Pharaoh and all of his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and his charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and their charioteers. So Moses stretched his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the, chari and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let 
and army he hurled into the sea. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back, like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit a wife married in youth, then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. 
but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires, I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray.
Almighty ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you have pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, and your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy. To our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandment of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forgotten the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where our length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things, knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge, the one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beast. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him with trembling before whom the stars at their post shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God, no other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. a deer that longs for running streams. My soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul Joy and thanksgiving. 
Let us pray. O God, of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the works of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity in Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now let us sing with joyful hearts to the glory of God. Let us pray. O God, who make this whole most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have newness in life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. 
if then we have died with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. 
Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. stone. The Lord is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia, alleluia. What a profound, what a profound proclamation to make in the wake of the terrible events of Good Friday, when all seemed lost, and the very Lord who they had followed as their teacher, their friend, the man of God, was devastated and dead in the tomb, and all seemed lost. And then those incredible words, in some form or another, that came from the angels of God, that commanded, roll away the stone, for he is risen now. And the tomb was empty. And this is very important, that the tomb is empty, as Mary and the other disciples go. We don't want to find the Lord in the tomb because he's risen from the dead. He's risen from the dead. God has taken the devastation and defeat and all of the terrible human sin and evil that was put around Jesus in that tomb and has opened it up and liberated it and freed us from sin and death the ultimate bonds, the ultimate chains of the human condition, sin and death, God has broken and freed us. How did this begin? But on Holy Thursday, as Jesus showed his followers what he was going to do in order to show them the depths of the power of God's love by taking the Passover bread and wine and transforming these into his own body and blood, and then by assuming the role of a servant, even more than that, a slave, to wash their feet, the lowest of the tasks imaginable. And then he allowed himself to be betrayed and handed over to human sin and the sinful ones that came after him, an innocent man a man of God, a teacher of the word of God, a healer in the name of God, the ultimate servant of God, the son of God, rejected, abused, horribly murdered, put in the tomb, sealed in the place of death. But God turned an instrument, a human devised instrument, of terror, torture, and murder, and power into a symbol of divine victory, a symbol of victory that showed the power of God's love to change all things and that grace of God to change our hearts and to change the human condition. 
how does it begin for us as the followers of Jesus, but with the words, the Lord is risen, he is truly risen. A proclamation of God's victory, the Evangelion, as it's called in the Greek. A proclamation of military and political victory, except this is not military and political victory. This is the ultimate victory of God over the forces of earth and the reign of heaven proclaimed all around that Jesus, the Son of God, is king and not Caesar. That Jesus commands the heavens and the earth not the powers of this world. And his followers, in learning this reality, took it out into the world and began to tell all people that they are free from the bonds of sin and death. They are free from the conditions of despair, conditions of sickness and death that claim us for eternity. Instead, we are opened to God's eternal life and freed from the limitations of death. And how do we become part of this? We are baptized into it. We are baptized into the very death of the Lord Jesus and reborn into his eternal life. And we begin a progression of life, walking his way, his truth, and his life, encouraged by his presence, strengthened by his saving faithful word and nourished by the grace of his sacraments which transform us into more and more of his very self. A life of faith. Nine people with us today will in one way or another assume the fullness of that faith in baptism, all in confirmation, all partaking of the bread of life and the wine of salvation for the very first time, walking a way of faith in a life that we are privileged, many of us, to already live. And let us take this opportunity ourselves to be renewed in our faith in Christ and in our walk in his way, never taking any of the gifts of his sacraments for granted, but instead accepting them today afresh and anew in our hearts. Life brings with it many challenges. Life brings with it sometimes a lack of clarity, even spiritual darkness. The heaviness of life can bring a temptation to sink into despair, feeling that there is no hope. Looking at the world around us, we wonder how, how can we continue to go on the ways that we are. And this is where the power of God to defeat sin and death comes in. This is where the hope of Christ, this is where the love of God to conquer all things, including the reality of our sin and death, becomes triumphant. The way of the Lord Jesus is no more profound than when it has the power to change lives, when it has power to dispel spiritual darkness, when it has the power to dispel despair, when it has the power to soothe a wounded soul and mend a broken heart. A powerful example of this is in the witness of a woman from Vietnam named Phan Thai Kim Phuc, a name that may not sound familiar to people, but yet she made a profound difference in our lives. Way back in 1998, she stood as a 34-year-old woman at the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, where she had traveled. She had traveled after many years of recovering from terrible wounds and injuries that were inflicted in the course of the terrible war that engulfed that country. And she had come to Vietnam, from Vietnam to America, to forgive those responsible for scorching her with napalm. Her image is one that scorched itself into the American minds back in 1972 
when an image of a nine-year-old child burnt all over her body, screaming down a country road in Vietnam, was witnessed by millions of Americans and people around the world. And nine-year-old Phan Thai Kim Phuc would spend many years, many years enduring one horrible surgery after another, trying to put her life back together again. She moved in and out of despair and depression. She tried to get an education. She eventually made her way into a university in Vietnam. And somehow, in what had become an atheistic country, somehow one day rummaging around the university library, she found a Bible. And she began reading the Bible. And she read the Gospels and the stories of Jesus. And her life was changed. As she would say many years later at the Vietnam Memorial, when she came to forgive those who had scorched her, she said that God saved her life by giving her hope and giving her meaning and seeing that there was another way. And that she had come that day to Washington, D.C. to forgive those who had hurt her. But more than that, she wanted to work now with them and all people to work for peace, the peace that only the Lord Jesus can give. Not peace of this world, but the peace of God. That is the power of the gospel. That is the power of the resurrection that we celebrate today. An event that is the most profound in the history of the world, an event that we have every reason to see transform those very first lives and every life that heard about it. For nothing, no power of this world was able to terrorize them and compel them to silence their witness of the risen Christ. The more they persecuted the word, the louder it got. And the louder it got, the more it spread around the world and changed the course of human history to where those who are not even Christian, those who are not even acquainted with the basics of the Christian faith, in so many places live by values that in one way or another are grounded in the values of Jesus. Such is the power of the resurrection. The Lord is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia, alleluia. And so let us celebrate his resurrection by proclaiming it and by following forth in his great commission to make disciples of all nations and to baptize new people into the body of Christ in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we share in that sacred commission this night, let us all who are already baptized take this opportunity to renew now our own walk with the Lord Jesus risen from death to eternal life. I invite the elect, those being called to full initiation into the Catholic Church through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist to come forward with their sponsor when your name is called. Remain standing, facing the assembly. Wilhelmina Gregory. June Lee. Curtis Petrina. Samantha Petrina. Jerry Smith. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, let us now help these elect who are preparing for baptism 
with one heart and one soul. Let us, by our prayers, come to their aid in the blessed hope so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow upon them his merciful help. Let us stand as we invoke the prayers of the saints in heaven.
Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring those chosen ones to new birth through the grace of Ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty, ever living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wonderful effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side, along with his blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise in the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. My dear brothers and sisters who are about to be baptized, before I proceed, I need to ask you, in the presence of this assembly of the faithful, to renounce the darkness of sin in your lives and to profess the Catholic faith. And so, I ask you, do you renounce sin and do you indeed profess the Catholic faith? And so, my friends, I ask you and all here in this assemble who are baptized, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Wilhelmina, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. June, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Curtis, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Samantha, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jerry, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, forgiven our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. I invite the candidates for reception into the Catholic Church, who have already been baptized in other Christian communities, to come forward to the altar and stand with your sponsors as your names are called. Ted Christensen. Blake Fisher. Michelle Weiner. My dear candidates, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion at the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought, under guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to profess the Catholic faith in the presence of this community. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by Almighty God. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by Almighty God. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by Almighty God. My friends, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in unity in the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. And so we welcome you and we congratulate you. I invite those who have already been baptized in the Catholic Church to come forward and stand with their sponsors at the altar as your names are called. We welcome you here. Nicholas Battaglia. Lord only took three days.
Newly baptized in Christ, you have become a new creation, and you have clothed yourself in Christ. Having received now the white baptismal garment that you wear, bring it unstayed into the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Now newly baptized, receive from your sponsors the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light, and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes again, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. And now newly baptized, newly received into the church, you will receive the sacrament of confirmation as your sponsors stand with you. My friends, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord, and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are about to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. My friends, Let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on all now who are to receive this holy sacrament, to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. O powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, By water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My name is Wilhelmina and I wish to be confirmed. My name is Injong Ni. I wish to be confirmed. My name is Curtis, and I wish to be confirmed. My name is Samantha, and I wish to be confirmed. Samantha, please. My name is Jerry, and I wish to be confirmed. My name is Nicholas, and I wish to be confirmed. Nicholas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. My name is Ted, and I wish to be received. Ted, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. My name is Blake. I wish to be confirmed. Blake, be sealed.
My name is Michelle, and I wish to be confirmed. Church, and so let us welcome the newest members of our family of faith. Let's turn as we offer our prayers for the needs of the church. The Lord delights to provide for his people. Trusting in his goodness, let us offer our prayers this night for the needs of the church throughout the world and for all people who stand in need of the help that only God can give. For the church, may God's great love draw many souls to his son, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in authority, May God move their hearts to serve in humility, always protecting the innocent and the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people suffering from chronic illness, may God bring them hope amid their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, as we celebrate Christ's resurrection, May he lead us to new life as disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, especially Jeff Murdoch, father of Courtney Carter, may Christ welcome them with joy into his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the prayers that we bring to this mass, which we hold within the silence of our own hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all power in heaven and earth is yours. Please receive and answer our prayers in your wisdom. Accept our gratitude for the gift of the resurrection, the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus brings in your name. And strengthen us now so that we may always know your will and follow it, as we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 163, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain, number 163. Thank you.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what was has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. star pass over has been sacrificed and therefore let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth Our communion hymn is number 164, Be Joyful, Mary, number 164.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take this opportunity, first and foremost, to once again congratulate and welcome the newest members of our family of faith. Invite everyone to please come over to the pastoral center. There will be a reception uh, following mass this evening, a chance to personally congratulate them and also rejoice in the resurrection of the Lord. We also have uh, available a book for everyone. Uh, we, I should say one per household is how we calculate this. If we can calculate it that way, please. Uh, and it's a wonderful book called Jesus and the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. And I pr promise you that if you read this book, your understanding of the Mass, your understanding of the Eucharist and what we do and the connection to the Last Supper will change the way that you participate in the Mass and appreciate the great gift that the Lord gives us. And um, if you take this book and read this, and then um, I have a little plan for this book for a little bit later in the year, and I'll talk about that uh, maybe in a week or two. Reading it will help. Reading it will help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God Almighty bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of evil. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. 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 Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit in those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may God Almighty bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with our lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Very happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter, Father. Our closing hymn is number 577, The Strife is O'er, number 577. Swell the joyful strain.